These are the words of Iblis. And Iblis says, Khalaqtani. You made me. He doesn't just believe in Allah, he's talking to Allah and he's acknowledging that Allah is his creator. His kufr is not just of not, I don't believe Allah exists. His disbelief is actually his disobedience. I'll say that three times. His disbelief is his disobedience. His disbelief is his disobedience. His disbelief is his disobedience. Why am I saying it three times? Because there are people in the audience who disobey Allah and they say, it's not that bad, at least I still believe. At least I'm still, it's not like I'm a kafir. I do some stuff, I know it's messed up. But it's not like I'm a disbeliever. His disbelief was his disobedience. Shaitan will not, he doesn't need to get you to disbelieve. You can still call Allah your creator. All shaitan has to do is get you to what? Disobey. All he needs you to do is get you to disobey. You have to understand that. And if you keep telling yourself at the end of it, at least I still believe in Allah, that should be good enough for me. Then shaitan believed in Allah too. He did, he did exactly that. That's why I'm repeating that three times. You got that, that point? That's really important for this conversation. خَلَقْتَنِي مِن نَارٍ وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِن طِينٍ قَالَ فَهْبِطْ مِنْهَا فَمَا يَكُونُ لَكَ أَن تَتَكَبَّرَ فِيهَا And Allah said, get down from here. It is not appropriate for you to, be, to show your arrogance here. To think, to consider yourself big here. To make yourself big before Allah. What is the thing we say every time we go into salah? Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allah is greater. Allah is greater. Allah is greater. Which means I am not. I am not. I am not. And Allah says when you disobey, that means you're greater. You think you're greater. That's disobedience. So Allah says to him, it's not appropriate for you to, to be arrogant in this place. فَخْرُجْ إِنَّكَ مِنَ الصَّاغِرِينَ Then get out of here. Leave. You're cast out. You are from those who've been humiliated. A الصَّاغِرُونَ here means humiliated. قَالَ أَنْذِرْنِي إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ he said, just give me time, wait for me. Allow me a little bit extra deadline until the day these people will be raised again. Until the day where human beings are going to be raised again. He asks Allah, give me time until judgment day. Allah says, Qala innaka min al Allah says, you will be given time until, you are among those who've been given time. I am allowing you to stay that long. Ulama disagree whether Iblis died or not, or these are the progeny of Iblis, or whether this is Iblis himself. But the isharat in the Quran are, he stayed. That he stayed. And he was, like even there are a hadith in which he had, uh, like the Prophet ﷺ faced him. You know, so he did stay and he's, he's around. That Iblis, that same Iblis is still around. And he's got his armies. And he's got his minions that continue to do the waswasa on his behalf, including himself. So Allah says, I'll give you time until, you know, إِنَّكَ مِنَ الْمُنْظَرِينَ Basically, he got in trouble with Allah because of us. In his mind, who does he blame? Us. You know, your, 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 your two sisters in the house, not sisters in Islam, siblings. Your two sisters in the house. And you're both in the room. And one of them is on the phone, and the other one says, Get off the phone! How are we talking on the phone? And then the other one puts it down, and says, You can't tell me what to do. And they start fighting each other. And then one of them gets in trouble. I'm not going to tell you which one. <laughs> one of them gets in trouble. Now she got in trouble with the parents. But who does she like look at with these eyes that could shoot lasers? <laughs> You, you blame your sister. It's your fault. You, I uh, hate you. My parents hate me because of you. There's nothing that's wrong with me. I don't have a temper issue. I don't have any problems. It's you that made me look bad. <laughs> so, this is now, It's still a relationship of qurb. Iblis is want, he wants to show he's close to Allah. And now he's been humiliated because of the presence of who? Human be he develops this hatred for human beings. And he says, Ya Allah, let me prove to you, you made the wrong choice. Let me prove to you, you should not have honored them, you should have honored me. 
Let me prove to you that you should not have gotten me in trouble. They should be the ones in trouble. Give me time until judgment day. فَبِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي Because you made me slip. Because you made me do wrong. You trapped me into it. The second, secondarily, he blames Allah too. لَأَقْعُدَنَّ لَهُمْ صِرَاتَكَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ I will sit waiting for them. قَعَدَ لَهُ in Arabic means to sit somewhere and wait to ambush somebody. Qa'ada means to sit somewhere, to, and with a lamb means to wait, and you're waiting to ambush somebody. Like imagine on outside the door, one of you guys is behind the door of the masjid with a baseball bat, waiting for your friend to come out. Not with a baseball bat, with flowers or something, I don't know. But the idea is you hide and you wait for somebody to show up and then you attack them. And somebody who's waiting in ambush is exposing himself or not? He's not exposing himself. And does he attack all the time or at the right moment? He waits for the right moment and then he attacks, right? So that's captured inside la aqwa'udanna lahum siratakal mustaqim. I will be on the straight path, but I won't come out all the time. I'll find the right moment. And then I'll slip something in and slip out before they can realize I was there and that I that I said something to them. Summa la ati yannahum min bayni aidihim. Then I will come at them from right in front of them. What is what is right in front of us? The straight path leads to Jannah. I will come at them and say, Don't go here. Don't don't go to Jannah. Jannah is too far, man. I gave you something right now. Why you gotta work for Jannah? I'll give them short term benefits. I'm giving you one of, e- one, one of the many interpretations of each. He'll come at them from in front of them. وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ I'll come from behind them. I'll come from behind them, pulling them. You know? Somebody who's attacking you from behind wants you to stop. You're making progress and they want you to stop. And they want you to head back. This expression is used in the Qur'an. In قَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِكُمْ You're going to turn back on your heels. You're going to reverse. You were making progress towards Allah and you start reversing. I will see that they're making progress and I'll start yanking them back. I'll attack them from behind. وَعَنْ شَمَائِلِهِمْ وَعَنْ إِيمَانِهِمْ وَعَنْ شَمَائِلِهِمْ I'll come at them from their right and from their left. This has been interpreted in many ways. But their right means they'll be among good company, I'll still come to them. They'll be in bad company, I'll still come to them. Because on your yameen, you're, in, you're, on, you're doing good. I'll come, and the right side is associated with good deeds. The left side is associated with bad deeds. So from, your, from their right, even when they're doing good deeds, I'll still slip myself in. Even when you're reading Qur'an, I'll slip, he'll slip himself in. That's why Allah says, فَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ When you're reading Qur'an, seek refuge of Allah from shaitan. Why? You're doing a good deed. What shaitan got to do with a good deed? No, I'll come at them when they're doing good deeds. I'll attack them when they're doing bad deeds. I'll, I won't stop. I'll find the opportunity. وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرَهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ And then you'll see, you won't, you'll find most of them are ungrateful. You're not going to find most of them grateful at all. In other words, when they disobey you, when they obey me, that means they are not grateful to you. Where did this passage begin? Allah said, we put you on the earth and we gave you lots of means to live well. Right? Remember that? What is he, what, what is, how is the continuation of speech going here? Allah is teaching us, look, did Allah asked us a few things that we shouldn't do. There are a few things we're not supposed to do. Most of what is on this earth is halal for us. How many meats are haram for us? You can count them. Compare that to what are the things that are halal for us, uncountable. How many drinks are haram for us? Basically different variations of the same product, right? And how many kinds of drinks are halal for us? You can't count them. They're, they're, that's an uncountable amount. So the comparison between what Allah opened us for us to enjoy, and the things Allah said, to stay away from these things. There's no comparison. And you still go after the few things He told you not to do, then you are ungrateful. And Biblis says, look, the entire world you've opened for them, and you've made halal for them, but the few things you've made haram, I'm gonna make them do those. And you'll see they're not grateful. They don't appreciate all the things you did give them. They'll only appreciate...